As Congress no longer has agent for upcoming election, party is constantly raising questions on BJP, says Chief Minister N. Biren. Postal ballot voting for senior citizens of 80 years of age and above person with disabilities begin. 25,920 fresh COVID cases in India, 15% lower than yesterday. 492 people died from COVID infection. COVID-19 naging aktok na ba? Miyam na sapo na toy na kutpambiyo. To protect from COVID-19, wash your hands with soap frequently. Max Ningtina Niom Chum Na Upiu. Whenever you go out of your house, wear mask properly. Amadi Mi Amaga Mi Amaga Gimarakta Fit Taduklap Na Pambiu. Always keep six feet distance from other people. Hello and welcome to Eyes to English News at 4. Chief Minister N. Biren stated that as Congress no longer has agenda for the ensuing 2022 election, the party is going after BJP asking about its achievement and further said it is time to remove Congress completely from the state. He was speaking at the flag hosting ceremony of BJP candidate of Sugnu Assembly constituency M. Binod at Kakchin Kuno Hicham Angom Lekai. Minister of State Social Justice Pratima Bhomik, MP Lekse Mbasana Chauba and other prominent members of the party too attended the function. The Chief Minister further said rather than raising doubt on BJP government, Congress should deliberate on report card released by the government. All the people have now realized the transformation the state had witnessed in the last five years under the BJP government. Don't ask a question to the BJP what we deliver according to all the report card we have published in the web. Distributed to the state. Or do you have a problem? you have a problem, but 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 you MP Lekseng Basana Chauba said, Voting for Congress, whose government is known for causing unrest and violence, and NPP, which is led by the former DGP Y. Joy Kumar, is akin to ruining the state. As such, people should think thoroughly before voting for such parties. As part of the Election Commission of India's commitment to make elections more inclusive, accessible and voter-friendly for absentee voters, including PWDs and senior citizens of 80 years and above, postal ballot facility for absentee voters has begun today in six constituencies of Bishnupur district. The postal ballot service will be carried out for four days and the district election office has notified that 600 156 senior citizens absentee voters and 170 absentee voters who are PWDs in Bishnupur district approved by the concerned ROs will be given the opportunity to cast their votes through postal ballot. The district election office also informed that the office did not receive any application from COVID patients for opting postal ballot facility. If any of the absentee voters missed their chances, to franchise their votes, they can cast their votes on February 23. Polling officer, micro-observer, videographer and security personnel were part of the polling team that carried out the service in Nambol, Oinam, Bishnupur, Moirang, Thanga and Kumbi Assembly constituencies. Speaking on the occasion, RO of Nambol blog Kumukcham Renuka said, the first phase of postal ballot service for senior citizens and person with disabilities 
is commenced today in Oinam Assembly constituency. Postal ballot will be collected for nine voters in the first phase for Oinam constituency today, she said. Kendra Kuding Magda, 12D, apply to Virapa, accept of Viva, Kambu Singi, accessible election, Pandamsi, Tungabai, the Magda Mogi, my meme the Sangaga, voting rights exercise the Hunbani. With 25,920 people testing positive for coronavirus infection in a day, India's tally of COVID-19 cases rose to 4 crore 27 lakh 80,235, while the active cases dipped below 3 lakh after 43 days, according to the Health Ministry data updated on Friday. The death toll climbed to 5 lakh 10,905 with 492 fresh fatalities the data updated at 8 a.m. stated. The daily COVID-19 cases were recorded less than 1 lakh for 12 consecutive days. The active cases further declined to 2 lakh 92,092, comprising 0.68% of the total infections, while the national COVID-19 recovery rate has further improved to 98.12%, the ministry said. A reduction of 40,826 cases has been recorded in the active COVID-19 caseload in a span of 24 hours. India's COVID-19 tally had crossed the 20 lakh mark on 7 August 2020, 30 lakh on 23rd August, 40 lakh on 5th September and 50 lakh on 16th September. It went past 60 lakh on 28th September, 70 lakh on 11th October, crossed 80 lakh on 29 October, 90 lakh on 20th November and surpassed the 1 crore mark on 19th December. India crossed the grim milestone of 2 crore on 4th May and 3 crore on 23rd June. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi will reportedly visit Manipur on February 21. The Congress leader will be taking part in election campaign. In a video message shared by MPCC, Rahul Gandhi said he was excited to come to Manipur and he also said he was looking forward to meeting all friends from both Hill and Valley and Congress party is committed to holistic development of Manipur. Congress will return to power in the state and the party will build a new vibrant Manipur that is going to show India the way forward. To come to Manipur, you're an inspiration for me, for the Congress party and for the entire country because you show us the way forward. You show us how to live with nature. You show us compassion. You show us gentleness. You show us dignity. I'm looking forward to meeting all my friends from the valleys, from the tribes, the Congress party is committed to the holistic development of Manipur. Together we are going to build a new vibrant Manipur that is going to show India the way forward. A peace rally was organized by NPP Tamay Assembly constituency at Tamay headquarters. Under the banner of We Want Free and Fair Election, more than 1,000 participated in the rally from surrounding villages too. Expressing strong resentment over all forms of hindrances the denigents of the constituency had faced during previous elections, the peace rally called for peaceful and free and fair conduct of elections in the ensuing 12th Manipur Legislative Assembly election. Romi Meite's a feature film, A Koigi Yum, has been selected for the 22nd Geo Mumbai Academy of Moving Image Mami Mumbai Film Festival. The festival will mark the world premiere of the film, A Koigi Yum. The film depicts the story of the impact of globalization on a small remote village, which causes the residents to move away in an attempt to make a livelihood. Noted stars included Master Ningthojam Priyokumar, Sori Senchem, Nanthoibi, Bhumeshwar, Robin and Rajan, among others. It is being said that preparations are underway to ensure that the film is available on OTT platforms. 
Flag hosting ceremony of Wang Kim Assembly constituency, Janata Dal United candidate Kangabum Jadumani was held at his residence located at Charangpat Mamanglaikai in the presence of Janata Dal United National General Secretary Afag Ahmed Khan today. Addressing the public gathering at Charangpat High School ground after the flag hosting program, National General Secretary Afag Ahmed Khan stated that JDU has been in power for 17 years in Bihar. He said that the party is growing in strength in the country and has many MLAs from Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh and affirms that even in Manipur some MLA will be elected. He further said that it will be impossible to form a new government in Manipur without JDU. <laughs> आपके विश्वास को देख करके आपके अफेक्शन को देख करके आपके कॉन्फिडेंस को देख करके मैं ये कह सकता हूं कि आने वाले दिनों में जो मणिपुर की गवर्नमेंट बनेगी वो जेडीयू के बिना बनने वाली नहीं है Speaking on the occasion, candidate Jadumani stated that Wang Kim Assembly constituency is lacking behind in every field. He challenged that if he wins the election, within a single term he will take up more developmental activities which has been taken up over the last 40 years. The Manipur Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Christian Church has appealed to the Election Commission of India, ECI, to reschedule the date of a second phase poll of the 12th Manipur Legislative Assembly election, which falls on March 5, Saturday, being a day of worship and rest. In a press release, the Manipur Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Christian Church said that the Seventh-day Sabbath is strictly observed by the SD a Christian church and many other churches who share the same faith of keeping Sabbath. Also, the Manipur Conference of Seventh-day Adventist submitted an urgent representation to the Chief Election Commissioner to take up prompt consideration and to defer the date of the second phase poll to another day. Manipur Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Christian Church has urged to the Election Commission of India to reschedule the date of second phase poll of the 12th state assembly election which falls on march 5 saturday being a day of worship and rest Maram Battalion under the aegis of Jwala Mukhi Sector and IGAR East has organized a late Lieutenant Colonel Robert D.A. Memorial Football Tournament under ARCAP in Maram. The tournament began on February 17 and is set to conclude on February 21. The tournament was declared open by Commandant of Maram Battalions on Thursday morning before the inaugural match between Kakadui King versus Mathak Sagai. Total 16 teams are participating in the set tournament. The finals will reportedly be organized on 21st February 2022 and will be attended by P. Chingpai Genevieve, wife of late Lieutenant Colonel Robert T.A. and Brigadier P.S. Aurora, Commander Juala Muki Sector as a guest of honor and chief guest respectively. Late Lieutenant Colonel Robert Cuba, who laid down his life in an avalanche in North Sikkim Saksa on 14th May 2020 was the first army officer from Maram Naga community. He joined Indian Army in 2004 through Technical Entry Scheme DES and passed out from Indian Military Academy Dehradun. With the tournament, Awesome Rifles aimed at promoting sports amongst the community which will benefit the people of the community. Nona Battalion of Awesome Rifles under the aegis of Headquarters 22 Sector Awesome Rifles and Inspector General Awesome Rifles East constructed two toilet blocks along with a Syntex tank of 1,000 litres at Little Kids Preschool Nungba Partu Village Nona District. The school headmaster had earlier approached and requested to the unit for construction of toilet block with water supply at Little Kids Preschool Nungba Partu Village because there was no permanent toilet facility available in the school premises. 
ISTV News appeals to the public to wear face masks, follow social distancing norms and wash hands frequently as advised by the experts to protect from COVID-19. ISTV News also urges the public to get vaccinated in order to protect oneself and others from COVID-19. Now the national and international news. A special court designated for the speedy trial of the 2008 Ahmedabad serial bomb blast case sentenced 38 of the 49 convicts to death under provisions of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act UAPA and Section 302 of the Indian Panel Code. The 11 others were sentenced to life in jail till death. Pronouncing the judgment, Special Judge A.R. Patel awarded a compensation of 1 lakh rupees to those who had died in the blast. He also awarded a compensation of 50,000 rupees for victims with serious injuries and 25,000 rupees for those with minor wounds. Usman Agar Batiwala, the only one convicted under the Arms Act and among those sentenced to death has been additionally awarded a year of imprisonment for conviction under the Arms Act. The special judge had declared 49 of the total 78 accused as guilty under various offences of the Indian Panel Code, including for murder, sedition and waging war against the state, as well as under offences of the UAPA Explosive Substances Act. As many as 22 bombs went off in Ahmedabad on July 26, 2008 at various ports, including the state government-run civil hospital, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation-run LG Hospital, on buses, parked bicycles in cars and other places, killing 56 persons and leaving around 200 injured. Of the 24 bombs, one each at Kalol and Naroda did not go off. The Chinese government has allowed China's coal power plants to run at full capacity to meet energy demands even as the country has pledged to reduce its reliance on fossil fuels and touted the ongoing Winter Olympics 2022 as more environmentally friendly. China's state-run news agency reported that coal supply will be increased and coal fired power plants will be supported in running at full capacity and generating more electricity so as to meet the electricity needs for production and residential consumption. The decision was made at the State Council's executive meeting chaired by Premier Li Keqiang on Monday. Last week, the National Development and Reform Commission and the National Energy Administration asked coal producers to ensure a steady supply of coal and warned them of further investigation and accountability measures. Before we conclude the headlines once again. Postal ballot voting for senior citizens of 80 years of age and above person with disabilities begin. Twenty-five thousand nine hundred and twenty fresh COVID cases in India, fifteen percent lower than yesterday. Four hundred and ninety-two people died from COVID infection. That's all we have in the news at four. See you again with more news at eight tonight.